Hello, welcome to worship at Christ Covenant Church. I'm Pastor Jim, Pastor and Kathy and I are co-pastors here of Christ Covenant Church. And we're recording this outside today, so it's a beautiful day. Uh, today is Pentecost Sunday. You see the red candle here and the red uh, vestment uh, signifying the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church. When we were setting up uh, for this service an hour ago, there was hardly any wind, but now there's been a little bit more wind. So we're hoping that that doesn't affect our service at all. Again, welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church. Next, we'll have a short update by Jeff Schneck, who is part of our Safety, Health and Wellness Committee. Following that, a duet for our prelude Spirit of the Living God by Kyle Robertson and our music director, Carla Metz. Hi, I'm Jeff Schneck with Christ Covenant Safety, Health, and Wellness Committee. We're in the process of reviewing all the factors of reopening our church. We don't know when that will be, but we plan to be conservative to ensure the safety of all our members. When we do reopen, we want to be prepared and have considered all the factors in a safe reopening. That's why I'm asking your input by completing the survey that was sent out last week in an email. You can complete it online or you can print it out and return it to Don Lepp by June 4th. In addition to this, we have other subgroups working on the criteria for returning to service, worship planning, and overall logistics. Your input is critical so that we address all concerns and make it as safe as possible to return to Christ Covenant Church. Thanks and be safe. Thank you, Kyle and Carla. The wind has picked up, so our candle will be going out most likely. And um, yeah, the papers are gonna be flying and who knows what's gonna happen on this windy Pentecost day. So please join me in the call to worship. Come Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Let your flame burn within us, stirring us to action. Come Holy Spirit, Energize our lives to work for God. Let your wind of hope swirl around us, lifting and moving us from complacency. Come, Holy Spirit, pour your blessing on us. Let your presence challenge us to proclaim God's presence and love in everything we say and do. 
And now please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples, hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem. A violent wind and tongues of fire were the symbols of a new thing happening in their lives. May your Holy Spirit burst into our lives today, inspiring and encouraging us to proclaim boldly the good news of Jesus Christ, who offers healing and hope to all people. Amen. And now please join in singing our opening song, Shine, Jesus, Shine. As we come to God in prayer, um, we want to acknowledge that it has been another difficult week. And while we say this, we acknowledge that it's often a difficult week for many in our nation and our world. And we who are white don't say that often enough. And for many who are not like us, who are different skin color, um, it is a difficult week, a difficult day, every day and every week. And so I come before you in prayer and I come before God in prayer daily this week, often without words and with simply a heavy heart and unsure of what to say because my words seem trite. And yet I come often in confession as well, confessing the fact that I have often said, I don't think I'm racist and I'm very tolerant. And yet the fact that I have not acted in anti-racist ways often enough or very often 
is in itself sometimes racist. And so I am examining my own heart. Um, on the Covenant Facebook ministerium page, there has been a lot of conversation about this. And there have been a lot of offerings of prayers of lament and prayers of pastoral prayers and words that pastors can lift up with one another in their congregational settings virtually this week. And so today I bring to you a prayer of lament written by Covenant Pastor Libby Petrowski, who was a pastor in Chicago. And so I'm going to pray, pray this prayer right now before we lift up our congregational pastoral prayer. So let us pray this prayer of lament written by Covenant Pastor Libby Petrowski. Dear Lord Jesus, come. Come and make your presence known. Make your spirit of justice, equity, love, and hope fill us each this day, for we are heavy hearted. We are angry and grieved and at a loss for words as we lament the death of George Floyd and so many others like him who have fallen victim to the ignorance, violence, and senseless acts of racism and intolerance of others. We watch these things unfold around us, these things that are so unbearable to watch, and we try to find answers to the madness. What do we do, O Lord? How long, O Lord? Help us, O God, to listen to those whose life experience is so very different from our own. Help us to listen and to learn and to be witnesses to your unequivocal love and justice and care for every one of your children. And God, we pray for George's family as they bear this loss. May they know your healing presence and your deep and abiding love. Amen. And now, God, we continue in prayer for this, our congregation, praying for our own congregational needs as well. And we lift up those who grieve, including the family of Valeria Freed, who passed away just last evening. We lift up her family and we lift up those of us who grieve as well. In the shock of that, God, we thank you for her life and we ask for comfort. We pray for the family of Bill, the father-in-law of Pam, Donna Hodson's daughter. For our family, Pastor Jim, myself, and Kaisa, and all of the extended Erickson family, and especially Uncle John, as our Aunt Janet passed away from COVID-19 earlier this week. For these and the many others who grieve, Lord, bring comfort, peace, and your grace. For those in need of your healing hands, God, we pray. For Claude and Kathy, for Karen Ness's mom and dad, for Donna Hodson's cousin, Natalie, for Elsie Godshall, Linda Zoika, Joe, and Helen Kleiner. God, we know that these are just some of the many who are going through many different situations that are in need of your intervention. Some medical situations, some emotional, some relational, some job-related or financial. God, you know each of these needs and you know the many other needs that are unspoken. And we ask God for your intervention, for your loving grace and peace and rest and whatever is needed, God. Thank you, God, for being our God. Thank you for the gifts of Pentecost, for the gift of your spirit. Lord, we confess that we don't always know what that means. We don't always understand what the gift of your spirit does for us. And yet we know that we are given the gift of your spirit. We know that we can sometimes do things that we don't understand. So we thank you for the gift of your spirit. We thank you for the abilities that we are given, even when we don't always understand it. And whether we understand these gifts or not, we ask that you would help us to use them to the best of our abilities with your help, and that we can use them to glorify you and to glorify your church and to help others come to know you. Lord, now we take a moment of silence to bring to you prayers that are on our hearts and minds, perhaps a confession, perhaps a praise, perhaps a prayer a request. We offer these to you.
God, during this time of silence, I was reminded of another prayer request that came up this morning, which was to pray for all those good cops that are out there who are doing hard work. As we see in the news this week, some of the bad cop stories, and there are so many of them, God, there are also so many more good cop stories. And so we thank you for those cops and those officers of the law who are out there to protect and to serve and to do good work. And we thank you so much for those, God. We pray for protection for them. We pray, God, for reconciliation for our nation and for our world. We pray, God, for reconciliation in our country, and we pray that it would start with each one of us as well, God, in ways that perhaps we can't see, but we ask that you would be working inside each one of us. We pray these and the many other prayers on our hearts and minds. We pray through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught each of us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, our debts, as you forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we have a special multilingual Pentecost reading of John 3, 16 and 17. Caribonso, Wabo, Lambo, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. John three sixteen and 17. Thank you, Craig and Lori and Jan and Dave, uh, Pastor Kathy, Jeff. Thank you for that, John 3, 16 and 17. On Pentecost, it's typical to read Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. And so that's what our text is for today. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like tongues of flame, tongues of fire, appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas around Libya, around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Ju uh, Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them saying, they're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter, 
uh, Peter. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arise. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. As always, may God add a blessing to this, the reading of his holy word, and also, as always, grace and peace to each of you from our Lord, Savior, and friend, Jesus Christ. Well, today is Pentecost, which is considered to be the birthday of the church. So, since we are all part of the Church of Jesus Christ, happy birthday to each of us. Birthdays uh, usually, well, maybe often, maybe almost always, involve gifts. And the church was given a gift on that day of Pentecost that we just read about from Acts chapter 2. Now, this gift didn't arrive as, as an e-gift card in your inbox. It didn't arrive as a fancy, uh, in a fancy gift bag with all kinds of ribbons on it. No. Here's how this gift arrived. Verse 2. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Verse 4. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. Just a few minutes ago in our worship service here, we saw people speaking and heard from different languages, Japanese, American Sign Language, Spanish, Kikongo, French, German, Swedish. And then we all understood John 3, 16 and 17 in English. This gift from God, the Holy Spirit, didn't just help those first people, those first believers gathered there, uh, understand what each person was saying. The Holy Spirit brings other gifts to each of us and to the church. Gifts like encouragement, uh, the ability to understand and use the abilities that God has given each of us to help bring others closer to Christ. And the Holy Spirit also nudges us when we do things that are not pleasing to God. We call that uh, being convicted of sin. The Holy Spirit also helps us pray and directs us to do things that are pleasing to God. Things that help encourage and strengthen and build up the church. And what do you know? Lo and behold, after that first day of Pentecost, the church began to build. Empowered by the gift of the Holy Spirit, the church of Jesus Christ grew, spreading around the world. Certainly, in those days and weeks and months after Pentecost, the good news of Jesus spread to those places and to those peoples listed in our text. You remember them. This is the text, by the way, that when we ever ask people to read, you know, congregants, they say no, because the names are a little bit hard. But this is where the gospel and the church spread to. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. 
from around AD 33, about when the Pente day of Pentecost was, to AD 600. The church had spread just from, from right there in Jerusalem and Israel, you know, up to Galilee. The church had spread and was the dominant religion in the area that was the Roman Empire, including the British Isles. And all around the Roman Lake, you know, that's sometimes a nickname for the Mediterranean Sea. Yep, you could take a magic marker or a crayon or whatever you want to do and color in all of these countries. Color in Spain, France, Italy, uh, Greece, Turkey, Syria, e Israel, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia. Color all of them in. Every country that surrounds the Mediterranean Sea. They were all majority Christian in the year 600 AD. Several things helped spread the church, helped the spread of the church, and the hearing of the good news of Jesus. Peace, language, and transportation all helped. For the most of the time between AD 30 and AD 600, for most of the time, uh, that whole region lived under what was called the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, and there was not a lot of fighting. An established economic language, first Greek and then Latin, helped people from Spain to communicate with people from Egypt, including talking about Jesus. And transportation. The Roman road system made it more convenient than ever for people to journey from here to there. Since then, the church and the good news of Jesus has continued to spread around the world. Today, Christianity is the largest religion in the world with about 2.3 billion people uh, or about 29% of all people in the world calling Jesus their Lord. The next highest religions in order uh, are Islam, uh, non-religious, which includes, you know, atheists and, and agnostics, uh, just kind of that, that kind of thing, uh, and then Hinduism and Buddhism. Much of the spread of Christianity has come since 1945, with several things helping greatly. Peace, language, and transportation. Since the end of World War II, there has been relative peace in the world. English, uh, first British Commonwealth English, and then American English, has become the language of commerce around the world, and then transportation. Tomorrow, I could hop on an airplane and be in Thailand on Tuesday. It's so easy to get everywhere in the world these days. What took 24 hours, uh, what, what would take me 24 hours to go to Thailand now would have taken me maybe five months, 150 years ago. Peace, language, and transportation helped the church spread, but more crucially was the role of the Holy Spirit which leads Christians, you and me and us, to do things that are right and pleasing to God, bringing blessings to people and living into the admonitions of Micah 6, 8, for example, where we are instructed to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. The Holy Spirit is the one that points us to, directs us, and empowers us to do these things. On our own, without the Holy Spirit, we are selfish. The Holy Spirit gifts us with the ability to look and, be, and move beyond ourselves, to share the love of God in Christ with others, and to exhibit the love that Christ shows us. To be selfless so that people are blessed and God receives the glory. From the earliest days of our faith, Christians were known to do things that, quite frankly, others didn't do. They were led by the Holy Spirit to do these things. Two, of, two things in particular that I'm thinking about today. Uh, in Roman times, Christians would go into the fields at night outside of cities and rescue babies who were abandoned and left to die. They were left to die because maybe they didn't want a baby or maybe there was some health issue or something else. Christians began to be regarded highly as people who cared for life 
even lives disregarded by society. When plague and disease would ravage again in Roman times and, and later on, citizens would abandon the cities and go to the countryside to save themselves. They would leave the sick to suffer and die in the city. Many Christians stayed in the city to minister to the sick, to minister to the hurting, to minister to the dying. And their reputation for love of those disregarded by society continued to grow. Friends, it is no coincidence that God was glorified and the church grew as Jesus' followers responding to the Holy Spirit became and continued to be champions for those who needed a champion, to be an advocate for those who needed an advocate on their side. These advocates, these champions were Christians just like you and just like me, and they were empowered by the ultimate advocate. That's another name for the Holy Spirit sent by God to us and the church so that we could live into the faith and proclaim that faith. In his sermon from Acts chapter 2, Peter proclaimed words from the Old Testament prophet Joel, reminding people that God said he would pour out my spirit on all people. At Pentecost, we, we remember that. God's spirit has been poured out on each of us and into the church. Why? So that, like in earlier times, the good news of Jesus can be shared with people and people can be blessed. And thinking about that Micah text from earlier, especially those on the edge, the downtrodden, the oppressed, those disregarded by society, those who need a champion to come alongside them. Later, Peter wrote in 1 Peter uh, chapter 3 that we, that is Jesus' followers, us, we should always be prepared to give a defense or give an answer for the hope that we have. Following the leading of the Holy Spirit, friends, it is time to now, not as Peter said, have a defense, but it is time for us to move to offense. It is time for us to follow the lead of Christians in the past and be advocates for or to be champions for those who have been and are disregarded by society. In the past, this has helped the church grow and expand and in this way, empowered by the Holy Spirit, the church will continue to grow. God's justice will be seen and people will still be blessed. Following the Holy Spirit's leading, we do what is good and right and pleasing to God. Let us stand up for, advocate for, come alongside, struggle with, and join together our sisters and brothers of color in bonds of love that are unshakable and unbreakable so that the sin of racism can be defeated and that things like this unjust killing of George Floyd in my hometown of Minneapolis, just miles from where I grew up, can never happen again. How can we do this, you might ask? Well, first of all, with the conscious help of the Holy Spirit. We won't get anything done without that, the conscious help of the Holy Spirit. And then, like I said, we go on the offensive. When in conversation, for example, when in conversation or on social media, the topic of racism comes up, don't just click the thumbs down or the anger emoji or anything like that or just say, yes, that's bad. Instead, we're going on offense now, remember that? Instead, say things like, hey, as a Christian, as a Jesus follower, that kind of stuff is abhorrent to me and it is not what God or my faith stands for because God loves all people 
I love all people. And I believe what the Bible says in Galatians 3.28, that there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Friends, let's not just nod our head in disapproval at racism. Let's tell others why it's wrong, because it's sin, right? Let's tell others why it's wrong and then act in love, empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a blessing to all people, especially our brothers and sisters of color who often are disregarded by society. At Pentecost 2020, friends at Christ Covenant Church and beyond, let us again remember that the Holy Spirit is a gift to us. The Holy Spirit empowers us and encourages us to be a blessing to all people everywhere and in every circumstance. Amen. Friends, receive this charge. Go forth as Pentecost people, filled with the Spirit, dreaming dreams, and seeing visions of God's possibilities, including the stamping out of the virus of racism. As always, we have a number of announcements, and I want to share some of those with you. Many of you just look at the Insights newsletter each week. Some of you print that out, and that's wonderful. In the Insights this week, uh, you see things uh, like announcements about Sunday school. And I also want to say thank you for your prayers for my Uncle John, especially with the death of my Aunt Janet. Pastor Kathy prayed about that. Thank you for that. There are things in the Insights to consider, uh, like... Uh, a note about thank you for your sacrificial giving. We really do appreciate that. We're so encouraged by that. Continue to keep that up. Remember that our adult Sunday school class is at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings uh, by Zoom. The invitation for that was sent out early Saturday morning. Please recall as well that our strawberry picnic, unfortunately, has had to be canceled for this week. One thing that's neat that I'm going to try to do this week, and I don't see it right here right now. I must have set it down somewhere. Nope. There it is. Really cool day of Pentecost. I love these word searches. Pentecost word search. So do that. And then, of course, as always, there's a whole packet uh, for the design for the family from youngest ages to, to older faith formation resources uh, for the day of Pentecost. There's also a neat... Uh, a little video about the Pentecost, maybe five or six minutes that you can watch. That was sent out after the insights was sent out. And so, friends, remember, it's Pentecost Sunday. The Holy Spirit empowers us to, do the, to be the church and to do the things of God. Our organist, Jeff Reifsneider, will bless us with the postlude in just a moment. Uh, breathe on me, breath of God, a good Pentecost song. But prior to that, I invite you to receive the benediction by Kelsey and Heather and Brooke New. The peace of God be in your heart. The grace of God be in your words. The love of God be in your hands. The joy of God be in your soul and in the song that your life sings.